Who? So this month, we've been talking about entrepreneurial success. We've been talking about entrepreneurial success. And we've gone from, you know, um, we started with, um, we started with fixing, fixing pain. And one of the things I said, I'm just going to backtrack because I, because of some of you that, uh, you know, just came for the first time. One of the things I said is this, until you are able to embrace pain, you cannot go forward in life. And the reason I said so was this. Most people, I said this, I said setback doesn't stop people. What stops people is the pain and the embarrassment setback cost. It eventually stops them. I'll give an example. So someone starts a business with, let's say, 250 million naira, starts an IT business, and the thing went down the drain, only has about 20 million naira left. And, you know, it goes like, why did I even resign my job from Microsoft? Why did I even start this business? And because of that, I will never do business again. What, listen to me. What he doesn't realize is this. It was not the loss that stopped him. Because the truth is this. By losing the amount of money, there are a lot of things he has learned that will make him better for the next step of life. If he can apply and see what he's learned. But what happened is that he begins to shield himself from further pain. And that's why the most successful people have an amazing rate of recovery from failure. They have an amazing rate of recovery from failure. And that's, you know, and Christians, we have this kind of sense of entitlement. I don't know why this happened. You know, some, sometimes a Christian has an accident, loses a car, business is crashed. Like, I don't know why this is happening. You know, I, I, I don't know why this is happening. Listen to me. Sometimes, sometimes the loss is a lesson. Because sometimes you will never learn until things go bad. Am I saying the truth? Have you noticed every time your life is going so well, you're signing autographs, you're doing podcasts, they're calling you to come and deliver lectures and deliver lectures and deliver lectures. You never learn at that moment. But when things slow down, what happens to you? You begin to learn. And what has happened to most people is that we've not learned how to turn the pain and the losses into vital lessons for the future. That's what will happen. So instead of us to deal with the pain and the losses, we because it's a painful experience, we isolate it and we detach from it. I thank God for every pain I've been through. Because looking back, it taught me a lot. In fact, I learned the most when I was in pain. And I'm saying so because a lot of you here, the reason why you are not able to step out again is because there's a pain of a certain loss. There is a pain of something you've done in time past and you've not just been able to deal with it. And even though you are running current business, you are playing safe. You are no longer dangerous. You are no longer dangerous. You know, I saw a statistic that shocked me that said the best age, the most, the best age that can guarantee you so that your rate of success of starting businesses that will succeed is about 53 or 52, something like that. I was shocked because most people don't start businesses at 52 or 53. You know why? At 52 or 53, you have a lot of wisdom to start afresh. And I'm saying so because many of you feel here that you're in your 40s or 50s, you are old, and this is your best time to explode, and you do not know it. But you, but why don't people in their 50s start businesses? Because not because don't, at 50, they know more people, they have more money. But guess what happened to them? They are emotionally exhausted of taking risk. That's what happened. They are emotionally exhausted of taking risk. And that's the beauty of being a Christian because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's the beauty of being a Christian. We can get our strength to renew. Somebody say hallelujah. So today I'm on, I want to talk about limiting beliefs. I want to turn your Bibles to Judges chapter 6 in verse 11. Limit, overcoming limiting beliefs. And beliefs are very powerful. Why are beliefs powerful? What you... <laughs> What you believe is what you become. John chapter 1 verse 12. As many as believed him, to them he gave the power to become the son of God. What you believe is what you become. So let me give an example. So the power of belief. So someone says to you and says that, um, you know, you can never make it in Nigeria. Let me tell you something. If someone believes you can never make it in Nigeria, what will happen to them eventually? They will never be able to make it in Nigeria. Why? Your belief becomes your reality. It works with the law of attraction. Someone says something like, um, you know, if you don't know anybody in this country, this country will be tough for you. What happens? Just those things you've said begins to happen to you. Someone says, this business is nothing. That's what you believe. That's what it is. The power of belief is really huge. See, you can believe against what you are doing. Do you know that? 
that means you are doing something else, but you believe something else. I'll give an example. A lady is really hoping to get married, but she believes that nobody will marry her. You will see people investing so much into a business, but they do not believe that business will succeed. And unfortunately, life is powered on the inside or from the inside, not from the outside. That's why the seven sons of Sceva, what happened to them? The Bible says they went to meet a madman. They, they, they quoted exactly what Paul would say and say, Paul would say this and they said to the madman, but guess what? They were embarrassed because the power is not in what you say. So you will see some people, they will take an existing successful business model, copy it, copy the color, copy the logo. It's almost like a photocopy. They translate that model into that situation in business, but you cannot see them succeed. The reason why is that although they are doing the same thing, the power, the, the unseen power of belief is different. Listen to me, people. If you're going to get ahead, you must make up your mind. Because I want to ask you, how can you believe against your success and think you will succeed? Makes no sense at all. You believe against your success and you think you will succeed. A lot of people, when you talk to a lot of people, and, and let me say something. Um, um, one of my brothers told me about how his dad is called one of the richest Nigerians. And he said that when they were young, that this guy would always say that I will be one of the richest Nigerians. That they were in boarding school, local public school in the Jabode, and he will always say so. He said, today, they get one of the richest. The reason why is that what you believe becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Unfortunately, most of us, most of us, most of us don't, you know, we keep acting on the outside, but what we believe about ourselves. That's why the word of God is powerful because the word of God reveals who you are to you and reveals what you should believe about yourself. John says, I write that ye may know and believe. I'm destined to for greatness. I'm destined. Like, there's no negotiation. You can never find me in my future or my past begging for anything. I'm destined for greatness. My greatness has been set to before I was born. I was born into greatness. And anybody can see, let me tell you, there's such cliche, what we're talking nonsense. Is your lift going down? I'm not great, I'm just it. I'm not great. That, I'm, that, that's not that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, and listen, most of the people that talk like that, they are going down. Because the truth is this, they are just talking with their mouth. Their heart, which is vital, is not connected to what they're saying. Let me say about believing. If you believe you are successful, listen to everybody. From the inside, what you do to be successful will come out. The reason why is that you don't believe it. Let me use something you all of you understand. Have you seen guys that want to toast girls before? The first thing they will do is to convince themselves that you'll say yes. Yes or no? Once they can't convince themselves, but some of them will know she will say no, but they will go. But the way they talk to the girl, it will, the way they will gesticulate and act, it will be obvious they are not sure of themselves, and the girl can see through it. So we're talking about the power of limiting belief. The, the good thing as a Christian is this. You have the opportunity to alter your belief, to align with God's word, to help you get to where you're going to. Because let me say something to you. I'm very concerned. When you come to church, you find a lot of Christians really praying so hard, fasting and praying. And you wonder, why are things not going so well? Some people say this has been a tough year. The truth is that I wish I could agree with you, but it's not been for me. This has been one of my best years ever in my total life. And I wish I was saying this as a pastor, but really I'm not. There are things I've never done or achieved in my life that I achieved in 2020. It's just amazing what kind of year this is to me. It's the year I look back and like, Lord, I'm so grateful. But the reason was this. I, I told myself, the season don't descend my prosperity. But I, I told myself that early. I said, what is going to happen is this light shines in darkness. So when it gets dark, my light shines brighter. And it's been like that for me. Overcoming the meeting belief. You need to ask yourself, you need to ask yourself, do I have beliefs that always hold me down? So maybe I should define what limiting beliefs are to you. Limiting beliefs are unchecked assumptions about yourself, about your work, and about the world you live in. They are unchecked assumptions. It's an assumption. Someone says, I, 
I can't eat snake. It's an assumption. You've not tasted it before. It's when you taste snake, you will know if you can eat it or not. And most people that eat eating snake say snake is sweeter than fish. Hey, question, question. Did you see that? Just, just the way your mind works. Like, it's an assumption, the way your mind works. Some people are in a marriage and the assumption is that I cannot be a good marriage. See, if assumptions that you cannot be a good marriage because of something your husband did or who your wife is, you would not have a good marriage. They are unchecked. Because why do you believe what you believe? You don't check it. They are unchecked assumptions. Unchecked assumptions. Some of you are here, I, for example, now, I, I began to do things like setting income in dollars. Who said because I'm here, I cannot earn money in dollars? Are they not Nigerians that earn money in dollars? But it's just on check assumption. Some of you say, you know, until you, you get to a certain age. But thank God for those that bought pay stack. How many buy pay stack again? $200 million. I, I ordered those guys. Were they up to 35? 21? 29? So just my 29 year old boys that nobody know their father, their mother. They wear tight, they wear jeans. Some of them have dreads. See, and, and the biggest thing is that the, the people that have the worst belief in this world that I know, religious people, church people, because we construct mental boundary over ourselves. And that's why you see people come to church over and over and over again, but nothing is really changing. Let me say something to you. Someone says, Pastor, if you have someone that you know and is really struggling and his life is not going forward and is praying and doing everything, what should you say? The first thing I would say is this, check his mindset. You know why? Your mindset will paralyze all of the activities. It will paralyze it. It will sabotage it. You know why? You are going to pray from what you think. You are going to act from what you think. You are going to behave from what you think. What you want is an outcome. Your mindset informs your input. Once your input is wrong, no matter what you're doing, your outcome will be different. How can someone's prayer point that is pregnant and pastor or pray that don't lose the baby? She will lose the baby. She will lose it because there's a prevailing mindset that I'm going to bring the baby. Our prayer is that I should carry the baby to full term and deliver. Father, pastor, pray that I will have from what good delivery. So if you are still praying that Father, just take me out of poverty. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What you are saying is that your conscious reality is poverty. It's in your head, it's in your mind. That's why your prayer is that. You, but listen, when you are praying that I want to enter into prosperity, or I mean prosperity, automatically that prayer is swallowed. Glory to God. So that's we glory to God. So let's read. Judges chapter 6, verse 11. The Bible says, There came an angel of the Lord and sat under the oak which was an offer that pertained to Joash the Abrezite and his son Gideon that threshed shut out by wind to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, and said The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this even befalling us? I want to see the mentality of Gideon. Gideon had come to permanent conclusion based on temporary problems. Gideon had come to permanent conclusions based on temporary problems. So because you didn't get the job, God, why have you forgotten me? Because you lost money, God, my, I'm finished. Gideon says, if the Lord had been with us, how come this is happening? Let me say something to you. One of the things you must realize is this, and this is why as Christians, we don't believe in lots. When I say lots, you say, if it's the will of God, you put the paper, 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 say, I will choose one, I'll mix and choose one. You know why we don't believe in those things? Because we understand that the power of the devil can interfere in the physical realm. That's why we don't believe in lots. And if you notice, the moment the apostles received the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, there was nothing like lots again. Have you noticed that? Because the Spirit himself began to guide them. They did that before they received the Holy Spirit. So why am I saying this? The reason I'm saying so is this. Satan can interpret physical experiences to convince you something that is not true. You know why? Because once it can convince you and your mind accepts it, that thing that is not true becomes a reality in your life. Mark chapter 4. 
let's get into this thing. Mark chapter 4. So what Satan will do is that it will make sure you lose some money and it will make sure that so that it will use the opportunity to convince you. All right. Mark chapter 4. Verse 17 or verse 16. The Bible says, and these are the Bible says, and these are they like Christ, which are sown on stony ground, who when they heard the word immediately received it with gladness, but have no root in them. And guess what happened? And so the word endured for a time. Guess the next thing. The Bible says, and when affliction, affliction means tough times or persecution. Why does it come? The Bible says it ariseth not because they did bad. It ariseth for the word's sake. Satan is hoping that before you become grounded in that prophetic word, he will attack you with circumstances and situations so that you will change your mind. I told one sister, she had, she had gotten pregnant. I said, my sister, no matter what happens, we are having a baby. He said, why did you say that? I said, because I don't know what's ahead of you. Because next thing, you start spotting, spotting, spotting. Hey, hey. From that spotting, they thought, because, let me tell you how Satan attacks you. When the Bible says, we are not ignorant of the devices of Satan. People think the devices are physical devices. That's not what it means. In fact, the word device there in the Greek means thoughts. What Satan does is, everybody look at me. He will make something happen in the physical. Because that becomes the trigger for your mind to open up to a thought. So, when you say that thing, he will bring the thought, but he was the one that made sure that thing was there, and you see, so he could present the thought. So when the Bible says that Satan showed, Satan showed Jesus all the kingdom of the world, the moment he did, it was in his mind. He was in his mind. He showed it. He just did something. He, he said, well, "How did Satan tell just Christ?" He said, "That take the son and come to bread." He, someone said, "Satan was beside him. Come on, if Satan is beside you, will you follow the temptation?" Ah, that cannot be called to be temptation. Now. Satan is beside you. What what is tempting you then? What happened was that I just kind of in the wilderness, he saw a stone. And as he saw the stone, the thought came in. If you are the son of God, take the stone, turn it to bed. So what happens is that as you're believing God for something, the contract was almost getting there. You just get a call. He's now awarded to somebody else. Oh God. You just give up. He uses that stone to change your mind. Someone is getting married, you're not married. You say, Can you see? I told you this is not working. You change your mind. That's what the Bible says. We walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says persecution and what affliction ariseth for the word's sake. That's why I say if you're going to walk this walk, you will feel pain. You will feel pain. You will feel loss. But you will say that, my brother, we are not giving up. We die dear. Because there is testimonies are. And this thing I'm saying is very important. So you start a business, the, you, it's not working out. See, you we die there. The only way it can work is to work out. That's the only way it can work. The Bible says we are not of them that look back. Why do we look back? For what? You set a target, I'm going to make 500 million. You will be pursuing it. So I say, what about the time? Oh, I don't make it. I land, I go back again. I go back to that goal again because listen to me. I must train my spirit on how to set goals and achieve it. Glory to God. Let's go back to the book of Job. Jude, rather. Judges. So, what did Gideon say? Gideon says, Oh Lord, if God had been with us, why then is this befalling us? Once you understand what I'm saying, sometimes God comes late because he wants to come big. Oh my God. Did you leave your voices at home this morning? Those online are you getting blessed? Sometimes, listen, watch this in the Bible. Every woman that had a delay, they gave back to each other children. Let's start from Elizabeth. Let's go to Sarah. Let's go to Hannah. Extraordinary children. But once you don't understand this perspective, Every time there's a delay, you will be you will be interpreting in the wrong way. The word said I was in the, that God has forgotten me. God has said, no. So the thing is that what happens is this: instead of you to be persistent by yourself, you give up. 
So there are people, there are ladies here that want to get married, but they give them up for marriage. You see, I dress my girl, we see today. I think I can come and keep myself. There are, ladies, there are ladies that, you know, I got a testimony yesterday. The lady was telling me on the testimony, he said, This next level prayer. He said, I've not seen my frustration since February. I think something like that. February. You know how long that is? I shared one last week. The lady had not seen her menstruation two years. She used to see it three, three, or I think five, five months before. So she now went to do a medical procedure that even stopped everything. Two years. I didn't know because she attends church. So I didn't know, but I knew she was wanting to have a child. So I said to her, and let me show the power of limiting beliefs. This bothers me. I said to her, my sister, are you in the group for those that want to get pregnant in the next level group? She said, no, I didn't join. I could see the resistance as I asked her. I backed. I backed her. She called me about three weeks ago. So I didn't tell you why I didn't join. But why I didn't join was very simple. If you have not seen your menstruation for two years, that means I'm not ovulating. How do you even get pregnant when you're ovulating? Because in my mind, it's one by one that God will Can you see the power of limiting beliefs? I said, so what happened? He said, all I told God was this, if I can menstruate, I can believe you for something else. I said, so why are you calling me? He said, because I began to menstruate today, in two years. But you could have also said, Lord, that menstruation could have become pregnancy. But the limit of your belief put the limit of what God can do. That's the truth. I'm telling you, that, that's why, that's why what you see, and see, and that's why you see Christians sometimes, can I be honest? Sometimes the most successful Christians are those that were in the world before and became born again with them. You know why? There's something about being in church from a young age that your mind doesn't open up. Because there are religious teachings, not spiritual teachings that helps you to honor the state of the head. A lot of Christian girls that are single, the problem is this, they think that they deserve, because they are virgin, they deserve something. Listen to me, you must understand that when a man is trying to choose a wife, virginity is not an, is a good virtue, but not an essential virtue. I'm not saying don't be, don't be a virgin, but the way you want to explain it and take it as a trait to, listen, and you're a virgin by the grace of God, keep it that way. I'm just being a honest pastor with you. So don't be like, don't be like you, you know, no. and even when they want to pray, there's a way they use their virginity as, as what they call it, as, as weapons in prayer. Father, and I've kept myself, I've kept myself. Really, you think your virginity is, a, is, a, is an advantage to God? What should every father and every mother do that over mighty they die? And those prayers, what they do, they kill themselves those prayers because what well, they begin to say, I'm, the, I'm, I'm a virgin. God says, okay, since you want to receive the answers to your prayer based on your works, work for it. What they should say is that, Lord, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just for your daughter. Just based on grace. Here am I. Send me my own. I'm telling you, that's, that's what the simple conversation, I'm just here. Send me my own. for the virgin. Because the, the least of what you must know, works will never get you what you deserve. Because nobody can work enough. What we have, if we hear me pray during the next morning prayer, I always say something. I stand on the finished work of Calvary. You know, I always say it because I say it's not because I'm a pastor, it's not because I'm this. I say I stand based on the finished work of Calvary. That means I'm standing in the total authority and capacity of what Christ has done and who He is and who I am in Him and the Lord the Father has extended to me. I come in all that capacity and I'm making this demand. And that is what it means to pray in the name of Jesus. Praying in the name of Jesus is not adding the name of Jesus to a prayer. Is praying in the capacity of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. So someone has debt right now, and in his mind, he knows he cannot pay it. He will never pay it. When this church was just 20, 10, 20, I used to say, tell all the grandfathers, tell all the grandmothers. Someone say, Pastor, why are the grandmothers? Nobody's even mind in the church. Why are the grandfather and grandmother? My spirit, I was seeing it. God, God told us, These are your what? Visions are what? So when I was praying, God said, I saw that there'll be contraction this year because of economic problem. So I told you the year of expansion so that you don't pay attention to contraction, you pay attention to what? Expansion. There's 
to show how much we've expanded. There's never been a time in the history of our church we have had people see next level prayers right now. Almost 70 countries join every day from UK and Europe alone. 200 people joining every day. Expansion, sir. It was not what we thought, but that's how it went. I'm getting mails from Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Singapore. But it's what you believe. So let's go ahead and continue. And the reason I'm saying so is this. So a lot of your industries, where you really believe that you can't get to top 10, why do you want to stay in a place where you can't be top 10? And the word of God tells you clearly, you shall be the head and not the tail. And the reason, this is why you are that way. Because there was a time, nobody starts out not believing. That's not how we are. Look at children. Children always believe all things are possible. Is that not true? They always say that, can you buy me a plane? They, that's how they think, all things are possible. As we grow, we move from believing to unbelieving. But I'm saying that if you want to see the hand of God, and that was just what I said, anyone that will enter into the kingdom must be like a little child. He said, if you want to enter into the fullness of what I'm telling you about, you must be like a little child. Mark my word, in the next five years, there'll be some people here, what they will do has turned over every year, one billion. Some of them, 10 billion. You, you know the thing? I love the amen, but something needs to go inside because this is where, this is problem with church people. They will say, amen, the man will not be renewed. So why don't people, so this is the thing. Watch this now. So why do people have a goal in life or a vision in life? They walk at it and they stop. The reason why is this. This is the reason why. They thought that thing could be a possibility. They do not really believe that thing could happen. So every time it seems as if it will happen, it's an encouragement to them. Because if you know it has happened, either the customer dropped the ball or the financing was cancelled, you are going forward. Because you have seen it clearly. You are going forward. You have seen it clearly. But what happened is that it's a, you know, you're like, I'm trying it. Nobody tries a business and succeed in it, sir. When I say succeed, you can make some money. I mean, mega success. And I'm saying to you because you can do everything, but you have to deploy your faith into the activities to see results. The same thing when it comes to ministry. They say, we're going to do 40 sales. They say, yes, we'll do 40 sales. You agree, yeah, you agree, I agree. You know why it never done? Because in your heart, you know that you will not be done. You know. So the Bible says, and Gideon said unto them in verse 13, said unto him, O Lord, if you had been with us, where then is all this befalling us? What Gideon was saying that God, and this is what you're saying, God, if you are with me, why do I get into this marital problem? Why do I have this financial issue? Why do I have this business and career issue? Why don't I have a job? The reason why is that religion has told you that every time you have a challenge, it means that God is away from you. Is that what religion says? But what did the Bible say? Psalm 23. It says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, you are with me. That means that I will walk through the valley of the shadow there. See what it says? It didn't say, I will park there. I will walk. That means I walked into it. I will walk out of it. What does it say in Psalm 23 again? He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. That means against contrary economic policies and means very tough competitors. He says, God will prepare a table before you. You are expecting your table will be prepared and there will be no enemies. That's why when Christians say, die, 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 I say, you are praying on scriptural prayers, sir. Let them stay awake and see what God will do, despite them being there. Don't say, don't say Pastor, like, you don't, don't declare fire prayer. I said that I follow New Testament. There's no fire prayer in New Testament. There is no fire. See, don't pray things that just excite your emotions. Stick with the word. How's the fire? The only time the apostles wanted to call on fire, Jesus Christ said, stop it. Jesus said, stop it to the apostles. And you are still praying for prayer today. Is that you normal? And the reason why people pray for prayer is, is fear. Now, if my enemies are around, they will be stopping me. It's because you think your enemy's power is what is, is some kind of substantial. It's substantial. 
to be able to stop your progress. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I've dealt with spiritual enemies, dealt with physical enemies. That means that contrary to the fact that they want to give the result, revoke the contract, so will cancel the payment. Despite all of those things, the table was still there. That means that the enemy don't scare me. Why am I saying so? Look at, look at, look at Gideon's interpretation. When we saw enemies, we thought you are, are forsaking us. God is saying, the reason why you see enemies is this, because your table is prepared in the presence of your enemies. So what did God do? <laughs> the Bible says this, and now the Lord has forsaken us. Look at his conclusion. The Lord has forsaken us. Everyone look up here. I said this on social media, but I'll say it here again. Every time in your life, you feel as if God doesn't love you, God doesn't answer your prayers, God does not care about you. You will not be able to say answers to your prayers. You know why? You are believing against the things you want. When you see Christians are troubled, listen to them very well, you will hear these things in their mouth. They say, I don't know why my life is like this. I don't know why God does not answer me. I don't know why. Because there is an inherent belief that God is not faithful to them. And listen to me, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Whatever you believe, you become. Me, God, God pay attention when I pray. God loves to answer my prayer. A few Christians can say that. I'm saying, I'm a few Christians. I'm saying not here globally. Do you notice something in the, in the book of, of, of in the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, and John? Only one apostle kept on saying that the disciples that just kind of them. Have you noticed that? Praise the Lord. Did you notice that it was just in the book of John that John referred to himself that way? Matthew, Mark, Luke, they never referred to John as that disciple. That was John's personal revelation of himself to Jesus Christ. What happened? When it was time to die, he was the only one that did die that died naturally. Because he operated from a certain revelation. He, that was the way he saw himself. If you see yourself as special to God, you become special. If you see yourself as ordinary Christian, you become ordinary Christians. Like me, I'm a money missionary. What's a money missionary? No missionaries go up and down and down. Me, I'm so blessed, my money is moving gospel, moving gospel, moving gospel. That's where I see myself. I'm a modern missionary. I'm born for the, it's 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 my destiny for greatness. I don't put things that fail. Someone says, Whatsoever I do, I shall what prosper. If things were failing before, once I get involved, it's not prospering. So, questions where does limiting mindset come from? They come from environments, experiences, background. I'm telling you, the easiest thing to be in Nigeria is to be poor. Why? Poverty is what we smell, eat, breathe everywhere. Why, America? Have you noticed you hardly see stories about people having business breakthrough in Nigeria? What the stories you see is about poverty and people stealing money. So let me tell you why a lot of Christians are poor. Ever look at you? I want to help today because I want to break what limiting mindset. A lot of Christians in this country are poor for one reason. They've told them. That to be rich in Nigeria, you will have to be corrupt. And because they don't want to be corrupt, see, see the thing, their mindset is this to be rich in Nigeria, you have to be corrupt or do what you don't want to do. That means, as a single girl, to be rich, you have to stick around. That means, as a what they call it, as a as a young man, you have to do corrupt deals and be involved with dirty deals. So, and because you're a Christian, you say, I don't want to do that. What you have also said is this since I don't want to be corrupt, I will not become rich. That's the truth. It's not mine. Since I don't want to be corrupt, I will not be corrupt. So you just find that you are working, working. God is not coming. The reason why is that what power is it from the inside? There's a thinking there. Since I don't want to be corrupt, I will not be corrupt. Sometimes the limiting belief is not even something you say consciously. It's just something that comes to that. So how does God change? So, so someone says, let me just help you. How does, ah, wow, so many things to say. Praise God. How does, let me just round up with this. So how, how does limiting belief affect us? How does it affect us? Number one, 
Limiting beliefs affect your emotions. And your emotions affect your choices. So, for example, all of so how many of you don't like dogs? Raise up your hands, please. You know that if they bring a dog around you right now, no, you will just freeze. Your mind will freeze. You can't do. You just are behaving as if you, you can't make rational decisions again. Is that not true? The reason why is that even though you know logically that this dog is my friend, so she does not bite, your mind cannot just focus and do the right thing because of how you feel because of a belief system. But a vet doctor doesn't feel that way. A vet doctor doesn't feel that way because his mind has changed towards dogs. So we both see the same thing, but the way we look at it are different. So it's not what we see is how we interpret it. But limiting beliefs affect your emotions. So what does that mean? So because you think that dogs are terrible, any money opportunity to dogs, you can never find it. Or talk to me now. Any money making opportunity to dogs, a dog, I don't know. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. What am I saying so? The moment you say that nothing works in this country, any any money making opportunity in this country, you will never find it. Why? It will never work. It's in your mind. The reason why is this. Your thoughts affect your emotions and you make choices based on how you feel. It's based on how you feel. You don't even make logical choices. That's why you do some things and you're confused. Today now I was coming here, I knew from the to school. I went to from them. Because my I just it's my auto system to go to a family. This has limited so the limited belief says that uh, say, say that uh, they are not great guys to marry. So when see, when you feel that way, so when you're in a situation where they are great guys, your feeling will not make you accept it. It's a it's an emotional thing for you. So your limited mindset determines how you feel, how you feel determines the choices you make. So people begin to make terrible choices because of what they felt what terrible. From the beginning of this COVID, I knew I could not get it. I knew I could not get it. I'm not saying don't wear masks. I just knew myself. When all of you are at home, you didn't see on social media going around, you can do this. I was entering everywhere, giving people food, this and this and this. I've not, people that are running for me that sit. I'm not saying. It's it's you don't eat that meat. When you get home today, go and go go. Placebo. What's placebo? Chalk, chalk medicine. These are medicine that have nothing, just chalk. I did, I did, there was something that I heard recently that says the current medicine in the world today, about 50% of them don't eat anything. That what you do is that once you take the medicine inside, your it activates your belief that something's eating you and the cells begin to feed themselves. Because originally the cells are designed to feed themselves. I'm telling you, bleeding. I go to the gym and I want to run a certain amount. But I feel as if I'm getting tired. You know what I told myself? I'll just tell myself, Paladi, you are finishing this race. You are very successful. Even when you finish, you are very strong. I'm so impressed with you. Once I say that to myself three times, my energy picks up. Because what I believe I say to myself, my body is forcing it. The reason why most of this, most of this struggle financially, he says, personally, you feel your pain. It's not something that, that you yourself, you know that you're a hostile. You know that your life is going great life. You know by yourself. So because you feel that way, you will act that way. Because you act that way, what happened? You will choose that way. Let's close with the scripture. Matthew chapter 16, verse 6 to 12. Maybe I should say this all says, how do I know if I have limiting beliefs? Maybe I should give you some guidelines to help you if you have limiting beliefs. Ask yourself, why do I dream small? Your dream is equal to your size. That's the truth. You can't dream bigger than who you are. Limiting beliefs. Right. So, so how do you have limiting beliefs? Maybe some questions. What do you want? So, these are the, so the more, what do I want? Right? What do I want? So you know what you want. Ask yourself, what do I need to do 
to get it? Or who do I need to be to get it? And the next question is this, what's stopping you? That what see, that is what's stopping you is a belief system. So he said money. Ask yourself, why is money stopping me? Because I don't have it. Why don't I have it? Because I think they can get it. Why don't I think I can get it? Because how about it's poverty? Once you begin to dig and dig and dig and dig, you will find it there. That's why in John chapter 1, verse 46, Nathaniel asked Philip, he said, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That is a limiting belief said vocally. He says, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? How did Obama conceive? It could become the president of the United States. Never done before. Your father is in Africa and live as a first generation migrant. You become, you become, see, those are left dimensions of mental collapse. Many of you can never can become governor of your state. And the thing that we are, you keep bombarding them, creep back, creep back, creep back. And it's very simple. It's going to be unto you as you have believed. That, that's the principle of faith. It will be unto you as you have what? Believed. So if you believe in small, it will be small. Fast, it will be fast. Slow, it will be slow. How do you, Matthew chapter 16, how does God help us break religion beliefs? And you Christians, you are very blessed because this really applies to you. This really applies to you. Matthew, isn't it? Matthew 6. I want to read from the screen. Please, can you read from the screen so we can close the service? All right. Ready? No, don't talk like that. Ready? Exactly. Even the way you walk, the how you got to be. Many of you cannot walk straight. There's an image of self. You look down on yourself. A lot of people are not covering themselves. I was looking at the car singing. I said, What is difficult to stand to see? This is the problem. He said, I can't leave myself. Can you imagine what I'm saying? They say, take an opportunity to develop a capacity, so I can't. If you cannot leave yourself, how can you do the bank branch? If you fail in church, they will cover your failure, you will learn, you become better. If I was in paid employment, I will never agree for any money they will pay me that is fixed. I will always agree for what percentage of what I do. I will always be marketing. It's where I can determine what I earn. Only people that, that can boast for themselves can do such things. But I don't like marketing job. The reason why is that you think you will fail. Let's say it what it is. I don't like marketing job. I know I want to perform. So give it to me. Like, like Caleb, give me the mountain. Let's possess this one. Let's see. So how does God break limiting mindset? That's the question. Oh, I have a limited mindset. How does God break it? And many of you are looking for quality. Many of you are looking for someone to support to achieve your goal. The moment you are known in life, I came alone, you know, I go back alone, you know, your life will be better for you. You will just prevent yourself from unnecessary hurts. Yeah, 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 I'm, waiting. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. If someone has problems, someone doesn't have problems, I'm going to keep going. Out of God, we to look at it. Again. Yeah, Jesus said unto them, Take it and beware of the leading of the fire. I'm set up that you keep going. And the reason among themselves is it because I have no bread? Yeah. And when just proceed, he said unto them, Oh, you have little faith. Why reason yourself that because you bought no bread? He was like, What I said was metaphoric. Why are you thinking of physical bread? Yeah? He said, Don't you understand? Need I remember the five loaves of five the five loaves of the five thousand and how many you took over? He said, Disciples, why are you concerned yourself with feeding and food? That's not what I'm talking about. So he was saying that why are you talking about bread? I was hoping that this is what I was saying. I was hoping that when I did the miracle. You will not just see a miracle, it will transform the way you think and break a mindset in your mind. You get it? He was saying that the so he, he called them back. He said, I was hoping that it will break something in you. He said, Why is why are you still talking this way? Ah, he said, Why? Listen to me, which is easier. You see the blind walk, you see the living walk. Those are things that money cannot buy. How can you not believe for 10 million for your business? Meaning when you come for encounter for your next level prayer. When you hear what others are doing, it will affect and break something in your mind. So I said, Pastor, this church, we need to raise a lot of money. I said, well, I agree we need to raise a lot of money and teach about giving. But my challenge is this. When people are not giving, 
You just want to fear. Faith says, I will always have more. So I do. Fear says, if you give your feeling, don't give. So you're going to always make up your mind either to stay in faith or to stay in faith. And what is God saying? The same thing we give him. So it will do. So what God does for to everybody is this. It will bring an experience into your life. That is meant to shatter. But most of you don't absorb the experience. So that transformation of God. Let's pray. Stand to your feet. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I open myself for encounters that will break limiting beliefs in my life. Lift up your hands and go ahead and receive. Go ahead and receive in the name of Jesus.